Welcome, welcome back to another edition of the Guerreros Azteca Podcast, a podcast where we talk about the Liga MX and everything going on around the football Mexicano. So, gentlemen, I know it's been a long time since I've re- recorded a podcast, but it's a good time to be back. Why? Because we have the Liga MX finals underway. Leg number one is through. It's over with. Tigre is asserting dominance over America, winning the first leg at home, one nil. Um, so, hey, man. You know, in a, in a final, it, it was weird because no one was really expecting much from this final. You could tell that this final was going to be, I don't know if lackluster is the proper word, but it wasn't going to be a spectacular match. It was going to be a very, very tactical, very evenly matched uh, um, um, you know, matchup between these two teams, Tigres and America, number one, America, number two, Tigres, according to the table and to the numbers. Um, but, you know, I wasn't expecting great, great football. I know I'm sure you at home listening to this probably wasn't expecting uh, great football. But, you know, we all kind of had that that small hope that, you know, hey, it's the grand final. You know, let's see who wants it more. You're going to have to fight to the death and, and see who wins the championship. Uh, th- that really didn't happen. I'm looking at the stats in front of me. Eight total shots on target from both teams. Six for Tigres, two for America. So that there's something... That has to be changed in America. You can't win a game with only two shots on target. I mean, you got to take more risks. But we'll get into that. Um, but anyways, yeah, man. You know, the Liga has been lackluster, you know. Um, what else can I say? It, it's been kind of mediocre. So, you know, in the start of the grand final, you couldn't expect these two teams to all of a sudden, at the blink of an eye, you know, something switched and they're, they're playing spectacular football. no. Uh, especially now with, with with the style of these two coaches, um, you know, Tuca Ferretti and, and El Turco Mohamed. I mean, th- these guys prioritize uh, defense, you know, they they don't they're not managers that, that take a lot of risks. They prioritize defense and that's not necessarily a bad thing. But, um, you know, in a final. In a matchup, um, style makes like like in boxing, the boxing reference. Styles makes makes fights. For example, Mayweather, Floyd Mayweather is a probably some people would consider him a, a defensive fighter. Manny Pacquiao, a, a fighter that that is attack happy, that, that likes to attack. He's not a defensive fighter, so that's why both of them matching up would would make an interesting fight, a very entertaining bout. But you can't have two defensive fighters because then it's not going to be as interesting. So that, that's kind of what we have here. Tigres, a kind of, you know, with Tuca Ferretti prioritizing defense first. Um, the same thing with America. El Turco Mohamed prioritizes defense. And it was clear, man. El, El Turco, his, um, his, his plan was to wait. You know, they, it, was, it was clear after the first 45 minutes, after the first half. Um, I I was convinced America was waiting. They were waiting for Tigres. They were they were allowing Tigres to have possession of the ball, and they were waiting for a counterattack, a counterattack that never really came. America, you know, had one good shot on target from from uh, El Quick Mendoza that that was well um, well stopped by Nahuel Guzman, the, the Tigres goalkeeper, but. Other than that, there wasn't a ton of action in the first half. You know, Tigres also had some good shots um, on goal and some that that went wide. But um, after the first half, it was it was it was a strange feeling because because a lot of you guys know already that I'm a, I'm an America fan. So when you have your team in a final, obviously you're nervous, you're anxious, you're 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 shaking and stuff like that. And this it wasn't the case after the first half, man. It felt like the game hadn't even started yet because it was so. To not use the word boring, but it was so damn tactical with so little opportunities that I didn't even feel nervous, man. It felt like the game hadn't even started yet. But anyways, I mean, it was something to be expected. You know, both these teams weren't showing a lot um, in the Liga. They didn't close out the season well, especially America. Tigres has like a 15 game win. No, not win streak, but 15 games in a row now, counting last night's without losing. Um, you know, there's some wins in there, but there's a ton of draws in that span of 15 games as well. So, but Tigres has been solid, and that's that's what I'm talking about. Tigres doesn't concede much. Tigres prioritizes defense, um, just like Turco does. But Tigres defends better. You know, Tigres, it's very very tough to score on Tigres because they're so good defensively. Um, they they take care of the ball. Um, so. You know that that that's one thing that I, I didn't like. So after last night, like I'm saying, I'm looking at the stats and uh, 
two shots on goal for America. So something has to change. America has to take more risks. That's what it comes down to. So if you have to ask yourself, what did America do wrong in this game? I have to say it's not take enough risks. They, they were playing very, very defensive. It, it was clear to me that America was playing for the counterattack. It, it was super clear that they, they allowed Tigres to take possession of the ball. And they were just looking for one little mistake from Tigres, a team that doesn't make many mistakes. And they were going to try to catch him on the counter. Um, after it, what drove me crazy and I got super <laughs> super aggravated with was that um, instead of subbing on an offensive player in the second half, El Turco decided to sub on El Chepe Guerrero. I think he, he took out Osvaldo Martinez. He subbed on Chepe Guerrero, a, a player who adds nothing, nothing, zero on offense, zero. And su supposedly he's supposed to be, you know, add, add something on, on recovering the ball, on, you know, add something to the midfield. But he doesn't do that because Chepe Guerrero isn't a player for America. He doesn't have the caliber. Uh, he's not going to have it. And, uh, you know, I don't mean to sound like I'm, I'm bashing him, but he he added nothing to the game. I saw a couple passes and he he was very erratic with his passes in the midfield. Um, I don't know what Chepe Guerrero is doing in America, but El Turco decided to sub him on to take. This was, I think, before the first goal. This was before the 63rd minute when Joffre Guerron scored the golazo, by the way. It was a golazo. We'll get to d describing that, too. But, um, yeah, he subs on Chepe Guerrero. I didn't understand that. Instead, I, I thought he was going to sub on Ruben Sambuesa or, or Michael Arroyo and look for, for uh, you know, some offense, you know, because the team w was, was pretty much no on, on attacking in the first half. So I thought, well, he's going to sub out, you know, maybe Osvaldito and he's going to sub on Ruben Sambuesa or he's going to take out Mares, slide Layun down to, to the to the right back spot or to the left back spot. I'm I'm, I'm sorry. And um and then you're going to you're going to you're going to try to get some offense going with Sambuesa or Arroyo. That didn't happen. He subs on Chepe Guerrero. So I, I I got aggravated with that. I didn't understand that, but you know, it, it's his style. It's Turco. He 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 prioritized his defense. He didn't want to concede. He wanted to take more control of the ball in the midfield. And uh, it ended up not working out for him. So let's describe the goal, man. The goal was a thing of beauty for Tigres. Um, uh, what, what can I say, man? Damian Alvarez, just a monster. A monster on the left side of the pitch. Uh, he, he was driving Ventura Alvarado, America's right back, you know, taking the place of Paul Aguilar, who is suspended, who is separated from the first team for, for a confrontation or, or for a fight, you know, literally a, a, a verbal or almost almost physical fight he had with Turco Mohamed. He got separated um, from the first team. So Ventura Alvarado, the young man, he's 22 years old, I believe. Um, he's he's Mexican-American. Um, he's taking place of Paul Aguilar in the right back position and he just he couldn't guard Damian Alvarez. He couldn't stay in front of him. And, and, and you know, I can't blame him, man. Who can? I mean, I don't think there's a right back in Mexico that can that can, you know, just nullify Damian Alvarez. I don't, I don't think it, it's possible. And I, I, I was glad and I, I applauded Turco for for defending him in the press conference after the game when, when reporters were saying, well, don't don't you think you would have been better off with Paul Aguilar? Ventura Alvarado made a mistake, this and that, and that cost you a goal. He said, no, wait a minute. Um, there's not a right back in the league that could actually guard one on one uh, with Damian Alvarez. You know, he 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 drives. He's been doing this for for years, man. Since I can remember, since 2003 or 2004, or whatever. Damian Alvarez has just been. He, he's he's great, man. He's very agile. He's very quick. He's very very quick, and to stay in front of him one on one, it, it's almost impossible. So. You know you can't blame you know that that the the goal on on Ventura Alvarado the the young right back uh, Damian Alvarez just made a great great play and the the cross was whew, what a great cross very very precise cross Joffre Guerron Joffre Guerron get gets in between two defenders you know he beat both defenders to the punch um in between Paolo Gols and pa uh, Pablo Aguilar he beats both of them and, and the header was just a thing of beauty. Moe Munoz dives. Obviously, he, he's not able to take that one out. Uh, great, great goal for Tigres. And, and honestly, Tigres deserve the win. Um, they're the team that, while not taking a lot of risks and while not going all-out attack, because we know that's not what Tuca is about, um, they deserve the win because they were the team that, that actually, you know, proposed it. America just 
did they 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 didn't propose it to themselves. America didn't take any risks until they saw themselves down in the scoreboards, and, and that's what I don't like. You know, Turco starts sub Turco subbed in uh, Rubens and Michael Arroyo once Tigres had scored. Once he was down in the scoreboards, instead of before you're down. Look for the goal yourself. You know, I don't, I don't understand that. But Tigres deserved the win because they're the team that that did the most to to look for the victory instead of just um, ju- just waiting and being satisfied with the with the nil nil score. So, um, yeah, deserved win for Tigres fans. But I mean, this isn't over. This this is a, this is the final, and it's only one goal. The visitor goal doesn't matter in the grand final. Um, America in 2013, in May of 2013, when they won their last title against Cruz Azul, uh, also lost the first leg in in El Estadio Azul in in Cruz Azul, and um, they came back. We all know the story. Moy Munoz with the with the header. Um, it's an own goal from uh, what's his name, Alejandro Castro. And uh, we all know that story, but you know what I'm trying to get to is America can turn this around. It's not over yet, and Tigres knows that. Tuca knows that. A a a manager, a coach with tons of experience in Liga. I think he has 101 games just in Liga, so tons and tons of experience for El Tuca Ferretti. He knows this isn't over yet. Tigres players, you know, with tons of experience, also know this isn't over yet. And there's a long, long story to go. So, America can turn this around. They shouldn't panic. But for the second leg, America does have to take more risks. You can't come out. Um, you know, don't go crazy. You can't go all out attack either because Tigres is a very dangerous team on offense as well. Um, they have like Damian Alvarez, Jofre, Jofre Guerron, uh, Lugo, um, Torres. They're, they're, they're good on offense as well. Um, but um, so America just you know they don't have to go crazy on on the second leg in the Azteca, but you do have to take more risks because you're now down in the scoreboards. You have to tie the tie the series, and then you have to look to turn things around and take the lead. So um, yeah, man, I think uh, it's gonna be an interesting, very interesting uh, leg number two because once again America has to take risks. They're forced to take risks. If not, they're going to lose the title. So we're, I'm interested in seeing if Turco is going to make um, some lineup changes. He has to. That's just my opinion. He has to. Luis Gabriel Rey cannot start for America anymore. America is playing with 10 men. I tweeted this out last night. When Luis Gabriel Rey is in the pitch, man, he doesn't do anything. And I have respect for him. He, he scored you know, over 100 goals. or he, he scored tons of goals in the Liga MX, but... Now is not his time anymore, man. He literally doesn't add anything to America. And I don't understand why, why Turco keeps starting him. He hasn't scored in so damn long. Um, and he just doesn't add anything. I think he needs to start Arroyo in his position. Or he needs to do something. But Luis Gabriel Rey cannot start for, for America anymore. So I, I'm interested in seeing if Turco is going to do it. If Turco is going to you know make any, any lineup changes, adjust positions. Um, or if he's going to come out with the same damn lineup that I, I hope he does it, man. Because America needs, like I said, needs to take risks and needs more offensive players. Start Rubens. Start Michael Arroyo. It, it's a damn shame that uh, Gonzalo Diaz got, got injured, man, in, in that series in the first leg against Monterrey. Because he was showing some interesting stuff. I never understood understood why he didn't get more minutes. But then I, I saw an interview um, in Fox Deportes uh, with Turco Mohamed, and he explained why he hadn't been playing Gonzalo Diaz all that much. Um, and he said basically he his ad- adaptation process was taking a while. He he would get gassed because he wasn't used to, to the altitude of Mexico City. He was having tons of uh, you know muscle injuries and this and that. So um, and, and you know he's right. I, I'll take his word for it. Um, Gonzalo Diaz, unfortunately. You know, the, what? what is it, torn ACL or something? He's out for like six months at least. So it's a damn shame because he was a very interesting player. And I, I really, really liked him. I, I was hoping that he would start. But, you know, he's he's hurt and he's out for a while. So um, another quick thing I want to I wanna mention is all the damn yellow cards that America received. Seven in total. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, seven total yellow cards for Club America. Uh, a couple of them came after the, the the goal from Tigres, so you saw a little little bit uh, some some America players getting a little desperate, getting frustrated with the game, and that's where some yellow cards started happening, but overall, I think after the first half, America had like four, three or four players with yellow cards, and you can't have that. Um, America was the, the, I'm using air quotes here, the dirtiest team 
uh, of the season, meaning that they, they were the team that finished with the most yellow cards. So it's nothing new for America to have tons of yellow cards. Um, that's just Turco style, I guess, you know, to, to disrupt a, a counterattack. He'll take the foul every single time. And obviously that's going to end up in a yellow card. So, um, Oh, and it was funny. Gustavo Lema, the assistant coach, Turco Mohamed's assistant coach, got uh, pretty much the red card. He got he got booted from the game, and he just he just he was saying all kinds of things to the referee. And I think what set him off was there there was a play in, in Tigres' uh, side of the pitch where where they fouled Rubens Ambuesa. In my opinion, it was a clear foul on Rubens, but they didn't call it. The refs just told Rubens to get up. The play continued only like twenty se- or fifteen seconds, ten seconds later. The same as exact play happens in America's side of the pitch. And I think Burbano gets taken down or Guerron gets taken down. And he calls that play and, and he gives the America player a yellow card. So that was just the exact play. But he didn't call it for America and he did call it for Tigres. Um, that, that was my opinion. And I think that's really what pissed Gustavo Lema, the assistant coach, off. And after that, he just he got thrown out of the game. It was it was pretty comical and you know it, it shouldn't happen. But it, it, he knows... Um, that it, it's probably his, you know, his last last couple of games or last two games in Club America because, as we all know, according to the media, pretty much everyone is confirming it. Um, Turco Mohamed is not going to continue in Club America, uh, you know, after the no matter what happens, even if Club America wins the final, is is the champion um, after leg number two, we'll, we'll find out. Uh, Turco is not going to continue and basically because his style doesn't fit America. A lot of people are saying this isn't fair, um, that he should stay because he finished uh, first place in the league. He has the team in the grand final. But um, in my personal opinion is, and it's always been this, man. I'm, I'm being serious. Even when America would win, I would say I wasn't happy. I wasn't satisfied with the way the team would win. And it's basically because the style... His style, the way he sees football just doesn't fit America, doesn't fit the institution, doesn't fit the club. And um, he's a great coach, man. He really, really is a great coach and he's proven it. You know, I don't need to say this, man. He's he's proven it. He's a great, great manager, but his style just doesn't fit Club America. And that's exactly why they're looking towards Gustavo Matosas, a, 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 a manager that prioritizes offense, that prioritizes, um, you know, possession of the ball. Uh, and, and and beautiful football, you know, Leon, Gustavo Matosas, Leon, best team I've seen in the Liga MX in a, in a long, long time, man, that Leon was, the Leon that won the Bicampeonato was, was amazing, and they, they played really, really well, and uh, that's all mostly thanks to Gustavo Matosas and the way he sees football, so that's what America's looking towards, um, but anyways, let, let's, how long have we been recording for, it's been 17 minutes, uh, well, I don't know what else I have to talk about, I mean, it, hey, we have some interesting stuff going on with America. And, you know, it, it's kind of weird talking about this because the team is in the final and you're already talking about a new coach for next season, which is Gustavo Matosas, and three new players. Darwin Quintero supposedly or allegedly is already signed for $12 million with Club America. He will be playing for them next season. Uh, there, there's a left back by the name of Miguel Samudio coming from Cruzeiro in Brazil. He got signed uh, for a, a total of 1.5 million, I believe. And Darío Benedetto, this I heard about this. This was news to me yesterday. Yesterday, the Fox Deportes again broke news and said that Darío Benedetto is now a confirmed player for for America in the next season. They have supposedly signed him for for four years and eight million dollars. So three new players: Darwin Quintero, Miguel Samudio, and Darío Benedetto. Wow, man! Darwin Quintero, Ruben Sambuesa, Michael Arroyo. Benedetto and Oribe Peralta up front for America. That's that's gonna be a very very interesting attack. Um, I, I'm hyped, man. But it, I don't even know. It feels weird even talking about it because the team is uh, America is in the final right now. So your head can't be anywhere else, and it's hard to focus on anything else when when you have the team in the final. But anyways, this all this stuff, all these rumors that that Turco is leaving and that Matosas is already signed and that Darwin Quintero is already signed. And that Molina and Quick Mendoza are going to Santos and this and that. I mean, obviously, it could have an impact on the team. Is it happening? I don't know. You know, only the players and the coaches know that. But um, there, there's already so many rumors surrounding the team and and the fight with Paul Aguilar. And then last night, 
uh, Turco Mohamed takes out somehow. I don't know why he took out Layun. I understand Layun wasn't having the best game, but you know it, it didn't make sense to me. Instead of taking out Mares, you know, and and keeping Layun, he takes out Layun. There's tons of rumors and speculation about the the health of 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 the club, of the relationships between players and the coaching staff, and uh, you know there's a new coach here and this and that. I don't.